Hello there. This is a special Women's History Month edition of The Stir, featuring our guest, who is the owner and general manager of the St. Louis Surge, the only professional women's basketball team in the region. Kalia Collar is also history making herself, not only because of what she does, but this young lady assumed ownership of the team when she was 23 years old. Ladies and gentlemen, Kalia Collier, hello. Hi, Trish. Welcome to our podcast. How are you today? I'm fantastic. Wonderful. So we mentioned the fact that you took over ownership of this team at the tender age of 23. I'm thinking at 23, year, 23 years old, most people are graduating from college, just trying to really figure out what they want out of life and, and how to, to start that journey into the real world, so to speak. You bought a team. <laughs> that was still very much so me. Um, yes. Graduating college, I'd had the, the luxury of being in corporate for about a year and a half. So my career started really early. Mm -hmm. um, and the background, the transition and the opportunity to create something I know I never had a chance to see here in the St. Louis market was a bit of a no brainer. All right. So you yourself were born and raised in St. Louis. I'm as St. Louis as it gets. I have to ask you then <laughs> if you say so. What high school did you attend? I am a bulldog, uh, St. Peter's kid, Fort and Walt South. All right. And so in high school, were you an athlete and played basketball? Or how did this love for basketball come to be? Uh, basketball was my first love. I started playing basketball at the age of five, but I, I literally played every sport. My parents kept me incredibly active uh, from piano lessons to swim lessons to taekwondo. I was a BMX bike racer. A BMX uh, I, I bike racer. About, oh, my goodness. Uh, everything okay. you can imagine. Um, but what was awesome, and through high school, I, of course, played basketball. Uh, I ran a little bit of track. I played golf. And uh, I always gravitated back to the game. So I was fortunate enough to get a full-ride scholarship playing basketball in college. And staying in St. Louis, um, I think, has been a, a blessing because I, I didn't think that I would mm -hmm. necessarily. So to be able to fast forward and see where we are today – uh, it's been quite the journey. All right. So all those sports and all those extracurricular activities, was this something of your own choosing or did mom and dad have a role in, in making sure that you were involved in all these things? Oh, my parents hands down made sure I was active. Uh, okay. I, I naturally gravitated towards sports. Like I, I believe in all the intangible things that you learn, how to lead, how to follow the camaraderie of the game. Um, and I'm really big on, even now, kids not just focusing on one sport, uh, just giving yourself as many options, as many opportunities, and just involving yourself to see what you gravitate to. Okay. Um, but sports is in my blood. Uh, I just happen to love basketball. So let me ask you, 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 you um, noted something that I myself had a question about because I have little nephews who are so involved in sports and they play like you did, you know, three, four, five different sports. And I look at their parents and their crazy schedules on the weekends, <laughs> on holidays, early on Sunday when somebody has a game at 7.30 in the morning. And I look at them and I think, oh my goodness, what are you doing to your kids? But you are saying that it is something that is good for the overall uh, development of somebody who may be still trying to figure out what they want to do. Absolutely. Uh, and that's one thing I give it to all parents, especially mine. It's an investment in your kids. Uh, it's an investment of the time, the commitment, the hard work, the dedication that you're watching your kids pour into, but you're also doing all the legwork of all the driving. Um, but I think it's it doesn't necessarily have to be a sport, but having kids active, engaged uh, within the community, whether that's volunteering, whatever it may be, is so important in the overall human development uh, and really getting kids invested into um, things beyond just themselves. We all know what an idle mind can do sometimes. Yes. And we, it, it's, I encourage an activity uh, before just being on your cell phone um, or gaming any day. Oh, well, yeah, most definitely. That is something that I completely agree with Not you about. Not to mention the health and the wellness component oh, yes. of just being active exactly. on top of it. Exactly. So let's go to this point in your life at age 23 when you decided you were going to be owner of the St. Louis Surge. 
What kinds of challenges um, were presented to you just because it's something, of course, that, you know, would have been new to you, but also just being at that age? Well, I, I told you I fell in love with the game of basketball, but I've always been fascinated by the, the business of sports. Uh, and having a background in automotive, uh, having a background in finance and sales and my corporate background, I think kind of teed up uh, the expectation that I had of what it might take to run a professional basketball team. But mm -hmm. to be truthful, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Um, but I knew that I would give it everything that I had, uh, that I could always go back and couch surf if needed. I was at that age to where I could, I could really just jump all the way in. Uh, and I took this crazy leap of faith of not knowing all the obstacles that would be stacked against me. I had enough people tell me that I had lost my damn mind. Uh, <laughs> that I thought, and who did I think that I was uh, to take on this lofty goal right. of saying that I'm going to build a women's professional basketball team in the St. Louis market and uh, in a baseball city, you know, where women's sports is already a tough sell. And I had every reason uh, to say, you know what, this probably isn't a good idea, but I also had every reason to do it. So, and your parents, what do they think of, of this venture? I have the most proud parents uh, imaginable. Both of my parents still come to surge games as if I play. Hey. Uh, that's one thing that I'm incredibly grateful for. I've never been told what I couldn't do. Uh, I've always been brought up in a home to where I've been encouraged. Uh, anything you do, you better, you better do it to the best of your ability. Um, and I think it's created what was already nurtured in me to be mm -hmm. this constant best version of myself, of continuous improvement. Uh, and so I, I'm, it's funny because I see, you know, I have friends that they have money. Uh, you know, they've been able to, their first round was family and friends, and they're, they're able to, to do things from a capital standpoint that I necessarily wasn't able to do. Right. But I think I'll take the, the love and encouragement um, any day. All right, so let's talk about heroes. Uh, who were your heroes growing up? Uh, my mom was definitely a hero, as, you know, as cliche as that one. Uh, I've, I've been blessed with great parents who have been really supportive, uh, but I've admired a lot, of, a lot of professionals from afar, mm -hmm. and I've been really good at team building and seeking out mentors and advisors of people that I've aspired uh, to be and just taking little be bits and pieces from them. Sure. Um, so I think starting out, of it, it was great to be able to meet Maxine Clark here locally. That's right. Transitioned from so many executives and CEOs that are part of my Power Surge supporters. Sure. Uh, which is this team behind the team of phenomenal women. Uh, and then you, of course, you have the the lofty. You have Oprah. You know who's been that pioneer that you get to see what's possible of someone else that looks like you. Sure, of course. Uh, and then you transition that into sports. I didn't have a ton of people that looked like me. So, you know, my idols are Michael Jordan. I was a huge Kobe Bryant fan. Yes. Uh, everyone that knows me knows that Kobe was my guy. Okay. Um, and now I think as I've continued this professional trajectory of being able to see what's possible, uh, Sint Marshall, who uh, is the CEO, of the first black woman to be the CEO of the NBA Dallas Mavericks, uh, has now become that immediate goal of being like, wow, anything is possible. Um, and so, yeah, I have a, I have a, a series amount of heroes, but I love um, being able to identify people in different industries. And I was going to say, I love that you mentioned Maxine Clark first, because there is this um, idea of athletes, um, women who are athletes and women who are known for being in sports that they are one dimensional, that all they think about is sports. And the fact that you mentioned a Maxine Clark first before you mentioned your sports hero says a lot about what you're aiming to be. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a businesswoman. Uh, I'm a professional that's seeking to build something beyond the game. And our, our entire uh, mission of don't just play the game, change it, is built on a, a fundamental foundation of truly you can do anything you don't have to just be one dimensional you don't just have to stay in one lane uh, and so maxine is a great example of a woman who decided that she would continue to build her career and build a, a an entire different uh, entirely different product that didn't mm -hmm. exist and i was gonna say in terms of being an entrepreneur i mean you really when we are seeing it here locally that you're putting the women in women's athletics i mean from hiring women in the front office yep. to advocating for uh, female referees talk a little bit more about 
um, your efforts in terms of um, you know, making gains in, in those fields. That's the amazing part of trailblazing. Like trailblazing is you open the door and you create opportunities for other people. And it's even better when you get to do it for people that look like you, that have been underrepresented, that have been underestimated. I love that. Uh, and that's the part that I have the most fun in, uh, truly to where we're creating opportunities for our players to continue their careers as professional athletes. Uh, I'm getting a chance to see women now that's transitioning into the front office within surge operations mm -hmm. uh, from our accountants, our physicians, our attorneys. Uh, and you cover the gamut when you talk about a franchise. Uh, and then for the next generation to see what's possible by the time they experience a surge game. Uh, you're seeing all of these different things that embody community in an atmosphere that we get to showcase at WashU. And so tell me about some of these players. These players who are playing on the team now, they're in their early 20s, which is about your age when you assumed ownership of this team. And it still blows my mind because I'm thinking of myself at 22, 23, and I was nowhere near owning a team, a basketball team at that. Um, but tell me a little bit about the background of these players and, and how um, your experience as, you know, at their age, you own the team and how that affects your interaction with, with these young ladies. Oh, it started with the core philosophy of uh, we recruit character first without sacrificing talent. And the benchmark of all of our players is around the brand of Surge. All of our players are postgraduates. On average, half of our players have master's degrees. Not only are we really good as two-time national champs averaging 104 points a ball game, but we're really smart. And when you see the career aspirations that our players have off the court, uh, that's the story behind the story. Mm -hmm. like if you look at me and you're like, wow, she's impressive. Wait till you see the team. Um, and their individual stories of how they've continued to really have this level of resilience to be able to live their dreams. Uh, and that's what's been exciting, uh, I think, for me to build a team of the women who embody Surge. Mm -hmm. of really this positive energy surging through the community. Like, I feed off of that. And to have them be an extension uh, of myself through the Surge brand is if you don't naturally like kids, if you don't naturally like to volunteer, uh, then you're simply not a good fit with the Surge. And likewise for them, I would think that they can sense that um, synergy from you because you are a positive role model for them and, and you embody what, what the team stands for. I think that's my job as a leader. Uh, you have to see it in, you know, whatever CEO, executive staff, you, you set that standard, you set that example. And I think it's easy for our players to follow uh, in those footsteps of saying they know that I'm going to give it everything that I have. I'm putting them in the best positions to be successful. And everything that we provide for our players, what we do on the court is the obvious. We're a professional basketball team, but what we do off the court of taking our players through home ownership, of taking our players through money management, every player is building to a 720 credit score and above uh, in everything that we're doing to ensure that post basketball, that they're ready for their career transition with the assessments and the level of investment and resources that we provide, that's the cherry on top. Uh, and I think that's what's really cool is people really start to learn the back end of what we do as an organization. Uh, that's how a lot of my recruitment happens uh, behind the scenes. And I'm thinking it really would take a village to do a lot of this. I mean, it takes a lot of effort to be able to to achieve what you want to achieve with with the players beyond their playing years. And how does that work? Where do you get the help to do that? You know what, Trish? That is that's something that uh, I've been wearing a lot of hats for a long time, uh, and I'm in the first time, the first position to really be able to scale um, and build capacity from our front office staff of really I'm in the middle of a capital raise right now, of seeing the level of investment, not just in women's leaders, but women's startups, women's organizations and businesses um, that have a trajectory of success. And that's what I'm identifying now as we build our minority ownership group. Mm -hmm. And I've understood that it took us a lot longer to get people to understand that we weren't going anywhere. Uh, that every year we were gonna continue gaining momentum uh, and having exponential growth and now we've built a foundation to really be able to build. And in 2020, I'm just getting started. And speaking of 2020, we are going into the ninth season of The Surge with you at the helm. Tell us a little bit more what uh, fans uh, should look forward to this season. If you haven't experienced The Surge game yet, uh, and this is going to be your first time coming to home opener, Saturday, June 9th, Saturday night at 6 o'clock, 
Uh, it's the place to be because it's an atmosphere. You're experiencing positive energy. The cherry on top is the the competitiveness of the talent that you see on the court, but it's the face painters, it's the live DJ, it's you know the affordable concessions to the affordable merchandise, the fact that parking is free. We have all of these things yes. um, that make up the, the full surge experience. Um, but this is kind of a, a fresh start for me uh, all the way around. And you know, as we've entered this new decade, I really wanted to elevate the Surge brand. I really wanted to focus on key partnerships that really holistically understand what we're building and what we stand for in the community, uh, and really that represent and share our value proposition uh, within the community. And so we, we have some really big partnerships that we're excited to announce uh, that's really going to provide and set the tone for players that just really experience their worth. Okay, I'm still hung up on the fact that you have face painters. Any team with face painters is a, a legit team here. Trish, the surge <laughs> experience all the way around for the price point, there's no better deal in town. And you play at Washington University's Fieldhouse, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, which, when you look at the origin of basketball at the Fieldhouse, 65 years, um, in the, 65 years ago, and then you fast forward to where we are now, uh, it's the first time you're seeing professional women's basketball at WashU um, that represents the community. It's such a melting pot of a fan base. And I love that. I love the fact that, you know, we have a diverse crowd at these home games. And the league that the Surge plays in, it's GWBA, BA, which stands for? The Global Women's Basketball Association. So as we continue to build and expand within the GWBA, it's the first time you're truly seeing the G League be built for women's professional basketball. Okay. Uh, I think everyone sometimes actually forgets about this disconnect of time. Um, of You've had the NBA 80 plus years. You've had MLB yes. 120 years, NHL 100 years plus. And collectively, women's sports is still very much so in its infancy. The WNBA is just peaking its 24th season. Uh, and so when you look at where we're headed now for the future, it creates so much opportunity for expansion. And seeing people invest in women's sports teams for the first time at a significant amount. Um, and that capital goes a long way. What was interesting to me was to find that 1% of sports sponsorship dollars uh, over the past decade, uh, reported by Forbes, has gone to women's sports globally. One percent. One percent. And so when you see that number now just move to three to five to ten percent, think about the visibility that we're going to continue to see uh, showcasing women's professional sports. That's pretty significant. And if you could look into that crystal ball of yours, what are you seeing in terms of the future of women's sports here in St. Louis five, ten years down the road? Uh, first, I see Surge being sold out. Uh, I, I this is the year for us to make a statement. This is the year for the fans, the community, the city to rally behind Surge in a, in a way they never have before uh, to show that not only do you support the Surge, but you do support women's professional sports in our city. I see we have set the tone to trailblaze for other teams to follow in our footsteps. We have ph phenomenal talent that's here in our city. When you look at other women's franchises that are building, that are growing, uh, that deserve the, the same amount of support and resources. All right, so tell us once again when that home opener is. I want to see you Saturday, June 6th, 6 o'clock at Washington Fieldhouse. All right, Saturday, June 6th, when we open the ninth season of the St. Louis Surge right here in St. Louis. And we are so excited about this new season. And uh, with Kalia Collier with us, thank you so much for joining us. And we will see you next time. Thank you.